They they hate me because there's there's a combination of factors. One, they're massively insanely jealous. All of my haters and detractors, I can tell I can tell when someone makes a video on me, I can tell by the thumbnail if they're a fan or a hater just by how they look. I can just look at them and go, he's unsuccessful, he hates me. All of life's winners love me. Like I've never met a life a winner who doesn't love me. All the guys in the UFC love me. All the big podcasters I meet love me. It's only just some sad guy with a terrible life who dislikes me. And that's because I talk heavily about personal responsibility and how difficult it is to be a man and how the life you live is a life you're going to craft for yourself, whether it's good or bad. And you're responsible for everything bad that happens to you along with everything good that happens to you. And if you listen to that message and you're not happy with your life, then you have to take responsibility. And they don't want to do that. They don't want to sit there and go, oh, this is all my fault. No, this isn't my fault. This is someone else's fault. He's a liar. He's a bad person. And that's why they attack me so heavily. But the reason my message resonates is because I say a very simple truth. I say that as a man, life is exceptionally difficult. And the best way to navigate it is to become exceptional yourself. If you're going to be very average at everything, your life is going to is going to suck as a man. Even as the woman, if you're very average at most things, you're going to be okay. But as a man, if you don't have that one ace card you can pull out the pocket, if you haven't got that intellect or that charisma or you have nothing else, if you're just average everywhere, you have no 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 bonus points on any of your stats, then the video game is going to be very, very hard to navigate. And, and that's basically what I'm teaching. I don't think it's what I say. I think it's how I say it. And I do this on purpose because I understand the power of being polarizing. And I also understand the power of making people think. So instead of saying something what i do is i take biological realities and things everybody know are true but i say it in ways that people don't like to accept and it confuses the brain so i will say instead of saying men are physically stronger than women so we should protect them which most people would accept and agree i'll say well women can't fight they're weak and and it's everyone knows it's true but most women will sit there and be triggered by it and they'll be like what do you mean we're weak well you are weak men are strong you're weak well, we're not all weak. Well, no, not all women are weak. Of course, exceptions do. Exceptions exist, but exceptions don't disprove the rule. In general, men are stronger than you and you're weak. And they end up trying to argue something that they know is true just because they're upset by the semantics of how it's said. And that's why I have these two hugely polarized camps where they say, he speaks the absolute truth. And then other people say, no, he's such a bad person. Da -da. But it's not what I'm saying. It's how I'm saying it. I want people to engage their brains and genuinely try and ignore the slave mind programming. I, I, what's amazing to me is that there's a whole bunch of people in the world today that have strong emotional responses to subjects, not just me, about lots of things, but they don't know truly why they have such a strong emotional response. You just talked about a bunch of people and you said my name. I completely, I can imagine the scenario because it's happened a bunch of times. But when you ask people, okay, you hate Andrew, you have a visceral, obvious emotional response to that name. Why? And they go, oh, but he said, he says bad things. What yeah, bad things? Yeah, uh, uh, well, he just says bad things. And that is the slave mind in and of itself. When you have an emotional response to something and you can't even tell exactly why you feel that way, you have been programmed. You need well, to analyze yourself. I believe that women, I believe that if a man and woman gets married and she takes his last name, she belongs to his family. That's what I believe. I believe you walk down the aisle and your father gives you away and then you change your last name. You're now a member of his family. You belong to that family. You belong to that man. I say that and people think it is a, a horrible. He thinks of him as cattle. He thinks of him as property. No, I think of it the other way around. I think a man has a duty to now protect and provide for you. He, he must do. He must be the best possible version of himself to make sure that you're looked after and that your life is as good as it can possibly be. He now has a duty to you. They just take it and try and misconstrue it. And yeah, that's partially because of how I say things, but also because there's been a huge campaign of weaponized false virtue against me where people pretend they give a shit about women to just try and attack me. All these people who attack me don't donate to women's charities, don't give a shit about women's issues. They just don't like me because I'm so massively successful and they want to try and take me down. So they make up a reason to do it. They can't call me stupid. They can't call me dumb. They can't call me ugly. They can't call me poor. They can't call me weak. They can't call me none of that stuff. So they just make up some other reason. Ah, well, he once said this and we think it could mean this so he's the devil and it's, it's it's absolutely asinine but the truth is a lot of people are suffering from slave mind programming if you have a strong visceral reaction to my name and you can't give exact reasons why anything other than a buzzfeed five second clip you saw on some bullshit on the internet why do you care so much the internet's full of garbage you care because you've been programmed to care and you've been told you're supposed to care that's the slave mind and the reason i talk the way i talk is so that people have to actually pay attention to my words and think they have to sit there and go, okay, what he's saying, perhaps he's saying it in a way I don't like, but what he's actually saying is true. I want people to turn their minds on. If I talk in this nan 
handy pandy 50 50 sugar coated way nobody's going to engage their brains and that's the world we live in now nobody engages their brains to the point where the entire populace of nearly every western country is sleepwalking into fucking certain death that that's why i talk how i talk so people have to stop and go whoa 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 wait say that again Oh, otherwise but, it's not gonna otherwise no one's gonna think because nobody uses their brain anymore if a woman wants to work a job and be a ceo then she should absolutely work a job and be a ceo i believe women are sovereign individuals who can make their own decisions i don't think that's an important thing for a woman to do i think a woman should be focused on having children and, ha and ha making a family i think that's the most beautiful legacy a woman can provide i was in i was at my grandmother's birthday i think it was her 92nd birthday recently and I saw the entire room. She had nine children, including my father, and they've all had a bunch of kids. And then I saw a room of 50 people that came from one woman. I think that's the best legacy a woman could possibly ever do. I, I don't see why they'd want to slave away for some company that doesn't really care about them and cares about the stock price and will replace them the second they, they no longer perform. But if that's what they decide to do, then I'm not going to sit there and tell them not to do it. I mean, I, I'm not sitting here saying women shouldn't work. I'm saying women should do what makes them happy. But I do also believe I'm not a woman, of course. I'm just giving my opinion. I believe that in my experiences of life, the women I've seen who are the most contented are the women who focused on having families. Not, I've never seen a career woman without kids in her 50s drinking wine every night who's truly happy. I've never seen that. Well, this is the thing, and this is why we talk about that. Women always want to talk about the underrepresentation of women on the on the board and all these high level jobs, etc. And I explain the reason that is is because to get there, you have to give up your entire life. Most women are smarter or smart enough to understand that there's a life outside of work. But if you look at a CEO man, he's usually given up everything for that. He doesn't see his family. He's always in the jet. He's working his ass off. He's stressed. He's All he does is work. He does nothing but work to get there. So if a woman wants to have any kind of life outside of her job, she can't be competitive. It's not about gender. It's about you're no longer a competitive individual because you do other things besides only slave away. And that's a good thing because slaving away just to get a corporate role, really, like you said, ain't all that. You know, it's it's bullshit. But that's that's the whole thing when you talk about these gender pay gaps and all this crap. But it's interesting to me because I live in Romania now, right? And the, the war in Ukraine is right next door. It escalated massively today. Putin's had enough. And, and it's next door. And I was here in Romania at the border handing out stuff while I watched thousands and thousands of women, refugees and children flood across the border as they rightly should. But none of the men are allowed to leave. So not all the feminists want to talk about equality when it comes to the boardroom. But when there's a war, they leave the men to die in the trenches and run away. Like it's all fucking false virtue bullshit anyway. They don't want equality. If they want equality. They want. They don't complain about being in the sewers. Not enough women garbage truck collectors. None of that crap. They want the cushy CEO job. Well, they can get it if they, if they want to give up their entire life. But I think that's a waste. I think it's better for a woman to recreate and, and reproduce and create children and have a loving family home. I think that's far more rewarding than any CEO job would ever be.